M&M's. Probably my favorite chocolate. What? Treat yourself, gang, it's Tuesday. What's going on with you, big dog? And it is an amazing Tuesday. I hope your Tuesday is as good as mine. A lot of times when I'm doing something right, I like to treat myself. Peanut M&M's is only second to crispy. I don't care what you say, fight me. But one thing's for sure, something I know we're not going to fight over is this hand trap tier list. It's been long overdue. So let's update and slot these hand traps in their correct position for October, 2021. What? Oh, the background. Now I've been having a lot of people asking me where exactly did I get that wallpaper and how can they get it? Now, ironically, it's not actually a wallpaper. It is a play mat. You can pick up this mat from infinitygamingtcg.com. Of course, I'll leave all the links down below in the comment section as well as the description. Without further ado, let's jump on in and talk about these hand traps. All right, so here we are at the hand trap tier list. Uh, first, we have to go over what is the definition of a hand trap. A hand trap is ironically a monster spell or trap that can be activated in your hand tends to disrupt the opponent or set you up for advantage now there are multiple different types of hand traps there are high impact hand traps hand traps that do a lot of damage prevent your opponent from doing a specific move or get rid of multiple cards for your opponent then there are low impact hand traps cards that only respond to a particular interaction and then there are something that i like to call uh advantage hand traps hand traps that don't necessarily do anything but give you a bigger advantage so i do have a different tier list different from the rest because hand traps should be rated a different from the rest currently right now i don't think that hand traps or single interaction hand traps are as powerful but once the new uh burst of destiny set comes out i think hand traps will have a little bit more time to shine I have a cut above arrest. These are the hand traps that are just really, really good right now. These hand traps are better than the other hand traps. And if you are playing hand traps inside of your strategy, you should consider playing them. Next, we have pretty good. The hand traps that are not necessarily mandatory to play if you are playing hand traps, but they do their job really well. Underrated hand traps kind of speak for themselves. These hand traps are really good and nobody is paying attention to them. Could be better is also hand traps that aren't necessarily good right now. And then, oh no, what are you doing, baby, is still in our categories. These are the hand traps that you should consider not playing unless you want to give your opponent a buy. So we're going to start off first with Ally of Justice, Cycle Reader. I want to say Cycle Reader is actually, mm, this card would be a cut above the rest if there were multiple light decks into the format that really could uh, die to Ally of Justice, Cycle Reader. But I would say that this card is pretty good. I feel like there are better generic hand traps that can actually stop the Drytron strategy far far more efficient than ally or just a cycle reader but this card is searchable through gear gag and x as well as orcas crescendo so if you are playing either of those cards consider playing this inside of your sideboard if you can or if you obviously play those cards next is artifact delancia artifact delancia is a card that is easily a cut above the rest and while i am talking about artifact delancia it actually reminded me to tell you guys something I have a new series that I'm steering up. I'm so excited about it. It's going to be called the Ultimate Meta Counter, where I talk about strategies and where exactly you should use certain cards to stop the strategy. If that's something you want to see, let me know down below. But Artifact Delancey is just so amazing in this format because while it isn't amazing against Virtual World, it stops them from using their Zanwu, their Chuchi, and their Qinglong, which will fuel their Chuchi on field. Against Drytron, it doesn't really have an application. But against BBW, oh man, for people that don't know, BBW is Tri Brigade. The deck needs to banish uh, Beast, Beast Warrior, Wing, Beast Monsters to be able to special summon its Link Monsters, and Lantia can really stop their turn. Lantia is also good against Crossout Designator. If you're activating a hand trap and your opponent uses Crossout Designator, you chain the Lantia. Not only do you prevent your opponent from banishing for the rest of that turn, you also can let your hand trap play through. So this is definitely a card that is a cut above the rest. Ironically, Ash Blossom and Joy Spring is one of the worst, worser generic hand traps. While it is generic and seemingly pretty good, a lot of times Ash Blossom only stops a monster effect for it to remain on the field. Ash Blossom and Joy Spring is also pretty decent against the current matchups, but not good enough. Tri or Drytron searches way too much for Ash Blossom to affect it at all given times. Tri Brigade, sometimes you're hitting just Fractal out of hand only to get Gammaed. Other times you're hitting Tinky for them to already have the Beast Warrior monster in hand. 
Against Virtual World, while it can hit Lulu, which is really the only viable target you want to shoot for, you never want to hit the Qinglong in Graveyard because they'll punish you if they have the Lulu. This card is just, it's not a bad Yu-Gi-Oh card, but it's not the greatest generic single disruption hand trap. I want to say that Chaos Hunter has finally moved itself to underrated, and there are a couple of builds that have been topping that have been playing this card. Preventing the opponent from banishing for the duration or as long as this card remains up on the field is amazing. And one key point of interaction I want to say is that when your opponent special summons Tri Brigade Shirake to their side of the field, you can summon Chaos Hunter and prevent Shirake from banishing cards on the field. Chaos Hunter does suffer from the problem of being a uh, blowout card, but only if it remains on the field. So if your opponent can find a way around it, then I mean, your strategy kind of goes to trash for that point. But uh, Chaos Hunter is still a pretty good card. Contact C is a card that I feel is pretty good. Um, this was actually really amazing against Prank Kids. I think its best place right now is against BBW, which is Tri Brigade, but doesn't do as much as you would want to. Regardless, the decks that normally play Contact C can search Tom Contact C like B Trooper, and that means that this card is almost free. I definitely do think that this card will get more valuable as more archetypes are introduced into the meta. Next is Dama Mama. Where does she stand? Could she be in a cut above the rest? Is she too strong? Unfortunately, I'm going to have to put Dama Mama into the could be better category. Now, Dama Mama could be in that underrated spot, and that's because a lot of players just would not see it happening. On top of that, since players don't see it happening, Crossout Designator is something that can't hit Dama Mama. It's a card that does interact very well with players that want to special summon from the extra deck and that want to special summon from the main deck as you're allowed to draw cards and destroy monsters on the side of the field. The problem with Dama Mama is always getting a consistent monster on the field that can have its effect negated, meaning that Dama needs to be reactive to another card that you probably have to use on your opponent's cards. With that being said, I would say it's a could be better card, but there are a lot of strategies that can interact with Dama Mama fairly well. I feel like the Despia strategy works really well as they have a whole bunch of monsters that can negate cards on the field. Uh, Jesse pointed out that Earth Machine is also really good with this card as uh, Double Headed Anger Knuckle can always special summon a negated monster on the field. Unfortunately, there isn't a lot of times for Dama Mama to be great, but if you're playing Triple Imperm and Triple Effect Veiler inside of your main deck, maybe consider teching her. She might win you some games from that perspective. DD Crow is another card that unfortunately can be better. Now, if you are playing DD Crow in the main board, I, I feel like there are better hand traps. And in the sideboard, the matchup that you really want to hit is Drytron, and Psycho Reader just does his drop better. Banishing a random BBW from your opponent's graveyard doesn't really do much. And in the, in the virtual world matchup, this also doesn't do much as well. It's just a card that doesn't have a spot for banishing a particular card. There isn't a spot for this card to banish a particular card right now. Dimensional Shifter is 100% a cut above the rest. The only problem with Shifty Boy is that um, your deck needs to be able to play it. Now, I'm not well too versed into the Burst of Destiny set, We'll be going over that set on Twitter, Twitch. We'll be going over that set on Twitch very, very soon. But from what I know, Flunderese can play Dimension Shifter. But what I do know is that a lot of other decks can play Dimensional Shifter. That's like Madolche, Thunder Dragon. Um, that that that's it. <laughs> No, but in all seriousness, Grin Maju, there are a ton of decks that can play Dimensional Shifter, and if they can, you probably should. Against every single matchup, against Drytron, Tri Brigade, and Virtual World, this card completely wrecks them, as banishing every single one of their cards before they can use their important resources is too strong. Same thing with Droll and Lockbird. Droll and Lockbird is seriously underrated right now. And while it does seem to struggle against decks like Virtual World and sometimes Tri Brigade, where it maxes out other strategies, there's almost every other strategy in Yu-Gi-Oh! Almost every single strategy in Yu-Gi-Oh! wants to search multiple times to get to their cards, especially Drytron. This card is an easy win, and I can see it, or it already has starting to be snuck inside a player's main boards, as being able to prevent players from searching for the duration of the turn after the first one is another too strong card. Effect Veiler, I want to say, is... Effect Veiler is pretty good. Now, the reason why Effect Veiler isn't a cut above the rest is because it's still a hand trap, meaning that when you activate it, your opponent can still triple tactic talent and punish you. That's the difference between Effect Veiler and Infinite Impermanence. Also, Effect Veiler can only be activated during the main phase and can be responded with, with Appaloosa, Bull of the Goddess. 
Engraver of the Mark. How good is this card against Crossout Designator? Because that's why players are starting to buy out this card or started to buy out this card. This is easily a, oh no, what are you doing, baby? Seriously, what did you do? Did I ever teach you anything? Did I teach you anything? Why did you buy this card? This was, this was definitely a bonehead moment. You want to not only have a hand trap for your opponent to cross out designate you, you need to have engraver of the mark in your hand to stop the cross out designator. Oh no, what are you doing, baby? This was a serious bonehead move, but if there's an archetype that revolves itself around declaring, then I guess this card can be good one day. Oh man, evenly matched is easily an underrated Yu-Gi-Oh card. Your opponent is not setting up these super ultra boards that uh, need to be broken uh, by playing a Rubik's Cube amount of cards, but your opponent is setting up boards that don't have trap negations a lot of times. Evenly Matched is an amazing Yu-Gi-Oh card that allows you to even the board so you can continue to play Yu-Gi-Oh. Your opponent will have to choose on which cards that they must lose to the banished pile phase down, which can be huge for you. I like to say that Evenly Match is one of the better Yu-Gi-Oh cards right now, one of the slept on Yu-Gi-Oh cards, and it's amazing against trap-based decks. And plot twist, in case you didn't know, trap-based decks are really good right now. Fantastical Dragon Phantasme is... Oh, I almost want to put it a cut... I, I, I'm going to put it as a cut above the rest. And the reason why I'm going to put it a cut above the rest is because the only matchup where Thanos has like no applications to is Virtual World because they don't link summon. But against every other matchup, oh man, this card is bananas against Tri-Brigade. Oh, imagine how many cards you just get to draw off of their Tri-Brigade monsters. Oh boy, don't get me too excited. The next one is Drytron. Drytron doesn't link a lot, but it does link fairly often. That means that Thanos can allow you to restructure your hand and get into what you want. There are also almost every other single top deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! Every play deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! Link summons. This card can really gain some advantage. The point of Thanos isn't necessarily to disrupt the opponent, but it's to get you closer to the cards that you need to be able to break your opponent's board. Also, since cards like Effect Villa and Infinite Impermanence are really good into the format, Thanos helps you prevent from being disrupted. It's pretty good. Moving forward, uh, Ghost Sister and Spooky Dogwood is... <laughs> oh no, what are you doing, baby? <laughs> The reason why I gotta laugh at this is because I bought these cards at $20 and I will never let myself forget this. Oh man. I really bought these at $20 a piece. That is, what was I thinking? The life point gain, I guess, is cool. And being able to gain a lot of life points off of Drytron monsters is cool. But when they have the ultimate negate board because you didn't play a good hand trap that can stop their turn as opposed to this, it doesn't matter how many life points you have. They'll just attack for game. Ghostbell and Haunted Mansion is the best single disruption hand trap in the Yu-Gi-Oh card game. That is right. This card is seriously the best single disruption hand trap in the Yu-Gi-Oh card game. No cap. It stops the important cards like Virtual World Lao Lao against the opponent. It stops the important cards from Drytron like Meteorona's Drytron. What does your opponent do when you stop their, 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 their ritual spell card from being added to the hand? Not much. This card also stops Tri-Brigade Revolt. If you are playing a single disruption hand trap inside of your deck, I strongly urge you to consider Ghost Bell first. This card is amazing. Moving forward, Ghost Mourner and Moonlit Chill. This card is similar to Effect Villain Infinite Impermanence. Unfortunately, through some rigorous testing, this is a card that could be better. The problem with Ghost Mourner is that it can only respond after a monster is special summoned. And while the damage is nice, I guess, it can only be responded to a monster after it is special summoned. Unlike the Fek Veiler and Infinite Impermanence, which can almost be activated freely, this card does have restrictions. Now, there may be a format later on where Ghost Mourner is a lot better because you can respond to your opponent's monster summoning when there's more uh, trigger effects on the field. Cards that say, when this card is summoned, yada, 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 then Ghost Mourner may be better. Possibly in the new, with the new set coming out, uh, I think it might be decent against uh, Sword Soul, but trust me, there's another sleeper card that's just really that much better. Oh, and we're at the sleeper card that's actually really that much better. Boy, I have been testing this card. And boy, this card's a lot stronger than what a lot of players think. So the first props I want to give about Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit is that it says it does not negate. But it can prevent some cards from being able to resolve. Take, for example, Opelousa Bull of the Goddess. It actually needs to be able to reduce its attack by 800 to negate a monster effect. So if you activate a monster effect and you chain Ghost Ogre... 
or your opponent activates Apollosa and you chain Ghost Ogre, your your card effect goes through and they lose the Apollosa. Big, 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 big brain. If your opponent activates Chu Chi or Chinglong on the field, you chain Ghost Ogre. Big brain. Also, my Discord pointed out that it's pretty good against Sword Soul. Sometimes in a Yu-Gi-Oh card game, you just want the monster off the field. You don't care about the effects. Ghost Ogre. There's actually a ton of situations where Ghost Ogre is just a lot better than you think. And this is one of the more searchable hand traps being able to be special summoned through emergency teleport. Ghost Winner in Reaper Cherries is, oh no, what are you doing, baby? Now, I'm not saying that this is a bad Yu-Gi-Oh card. I think that this card does have its spots. The problem with Ghost Reaper is that you must dedicate your extra deck. And if you're dedicating your extra deck, why aren't you playing Pot of Extravagance? Why aren't you playing Pot of Prosperity? Why, why, why aren't we doing this? Now, if you're on a budget and you can't afford Pot of Prosperity or Extravagance, I completely understand why you're playing this. That makes perfect sense. But I would rather see cards that allow me to play Yu-Gi-Oh than to disrupt my opponent and not being able to do anything. This card requires you to commit your resources, your extra deck into whatever your opponent's playing. It only works if your opponent is playing that. Not saying that that can't come up, but a lot of great main deck monsters are starting to take over the game. No Material is another Yu-Gi-Oh card that is just, oh no, what are you doing baby right now? This card can interrupt the first card, but we're in a Yu-Gi-Oh game where those first interruptions don't do much. Your opponent can just keep playing Yu-Gi-Oh. You're just like, what am I doing? Unfortunately, I don't think Herald of Greenlight is really good because one of the only applications where this card has is against the, um, or in the Drytron deck, and they're not going to lose to cards like Lightning Storm and, you know, Forbidden Droplets. They can't respond to it anyways if they send a monster. So it's just not great right now. But Herald of Orange Light, oh my God, like this is a cut above the rest. This is a card that negates the monster effect like Infinite Impermanence and um, the or Infinite Impermanence and Effect Veiler and Ghost Warner, but it also gets rid of the card. You having a discard, a fairy monster is almost like it doesn't matter because you're getting over your opponent's important cards. Same thing with Herald of Purple Light. It's a, oh no, what are you doing, baby? Both of these cards just don't have a particular moment. Well, actually, I, I, I'm going to put this in could be better because Imperial Order does end a lot of strategies, fairy strategies, turns. And this could stop Imperial Order anti-spell fragrance. Um, they don't really need to go against evenly matched, but this card's not completely bad, but it definitely could be better. Infinite Impermanence is one of those Yu-Gi-Oh cards that is a cut above the rest. I think that this is the second best uh, hand trap for single disruption that could be played in mass. So it would go Ghost Bell, then Infinite Impermanence. And the reason why is because it can respond to Appaloosa. It can negate Preta Plant for Anaconda. Um, it negates monsters in the same column. It can negate Shin Shin. Uh, it just has so many great app uh, applications and it doesn't, uh, you know, trigger your opponent's triple tactics talent. This is easily the second best hand trap. If not the first, you can make it a really good discussion. Miriota is another, oh no, what are you doing, baby? I had so much hope for this card, but unfortunately that hope kind of fizzled out. It is searchable with Tempest though, so I guess. Nibiru is another card that is a cut above the rest. I really hate that this is either top heavy or bottom heavy, but this card's really good and should be considered inside of your sideboard. Nibiru and your greedy Drytron opponent, um, virtual world tri brigade actually don't respect nibiru so they can get the rock if you actually hit them with it this card's actually insane right now now cyphering gear epsilon is better than herald of green light strictly because uh you know when you're playing drytron you don't need to worry about lightning storm but if you are playing a deck that worries about cards like lightning storm then yeah this actually might do some things also cross out designator is a Yu-Gi-Oh card that if you're playing drytron you could just negate with herald but if you're not playing drytron this card does come up Cypher and Gear Gamma, I'm going to have to put in the pretty good category. I don't think it's necessarily a cut above the rest. Um, the only reason why I don't put it in there is because not a lot of decks can take full advantage of it. But I do think it's like in that tweener in between the two, because this is one of the hand traps that I, I just don't think your opponent's going to play one copy of Gamma and one copy of the um, driver to be able to cross out designate. So they have to fully commit to this, which means they have to play those four resources plus the other hand traps, making them a little less consistent. So a lot of players don't cross out for this. Red Reboot, of course, is pretty good if you're in a trap heavy meta, you know, your local area or whatever is uh, getting ruined by trap cards. And this card is obviously awesome. Retaliating C, I feel, is underrated. Not necessarily amazing right now, but still really good. Uh, mainly because it does, like, you respond to your opponent's uh, Drytron Metrionis. And um, 
yeah, they, they get a they get a card that can search, you know, other cards for you and they get to lose their cards. Also great against Shut All uh, Fusion. This card's amazing against Shut All Fusion because, you know, Macro Cosmos on their side of the field and they get to search you a C card once they get rid of this. So this card's fairly good, underrated in certain situations. I feel like when prank kids do come back into the meta or when spell heavy or when decks that rely on spell cards to special summon come back into the meta, this will be pretty good, but until then, underrated. So Ravis is also another card that's underrated, and it's because these two cards are really good in permanent effect failure. There's so much targeting in the Yu-Gi-Oh card game, and Saravis just says, nah, fam, you ain't you ain't gonna do that, big dog. We gonna stop all that. And then lastly is Skullmeister. This card is kind of godly right now, mainly because it does stop Metriona's Dry Trot. It stops a lot of graveyard cards like Chuchi and Chinglong. Um, this card just has a lot of interactions with a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh cards, similar to Ghost Bell. I think that almost any time that this is in the format and really good, this is probably right behind in the format and still just as good. Well, that is all that I have for the Hand Traps tier list. I really hope you enjoyed what I had to say. If you did, I got a ton of other videos you can check out, boy. Make sure you uh, help that algorithm hit that comment section and also hit these videos and hit those comment sections because that'd be cool. <laughs> and of course, I'll catch you on the next video.